Joe Perone, welcome to the show. Welcome to Become Your Own Mother Flippin' Superhero, baby. What's up, Laban? Glad to be here with you, brother. Mate, well overdue. Well, well overdue. But everything is exactly where it's supposed to be right now. Do you agree with that? We're at the perfect place on the perfect day and the perfect time. Now, I've got your website scrolling down the bottom for the audience that are watching, joeperone.biz, just making sure that that's still the, the preferred choice. Oh, yeah. So, Joe, this has uh, really been I know, like a year and three quarters in the making, I think. Sure has. Has it been that long? Yeah. And, and I, I wanted to acknowledge you today before we even got started because most of the people that are going to be watching this uh, certainly on Facebook and uh, on LinkedIn, won't have had an opportunity to have gotten to know me had it not been for you and your ultimate act of go giving. And maybe we could talk about that as as part of the show today. But but what significance has reading the book The Go Giver had on your life? Oh, leave me. So, well, uh, other than the obvious of, of meeting you and, and being associated with people like Bob Berg and Meredith Bell and Bill Doerr, it, it's just revolutionized the way that I think about life, the way that I think about business, the actions that I take. And The Go-Giver was such a, a, an eye-opening book for me, Laban. It, it really cemented how how much giving means to me how much it means to the world and when we go about our thoughts of giving first what can we give and receiving is also an act of giving it completes the circle if we see giving as a circle not a straight line receiving is the tail end of that so i've been able to receive opportunities i've been able to give opportunities and the go-giver just taught me so much about that i'm so grateful for uh, john david mann and bob berg for creating this simple yet supremely powerful book and yeah i'm just very grateful for the tour. yeah me too <laughs> so for context just real quick for the audience who don't know the reason why you reached out to me when I was all the way in Australia, you were all the way in Connecticut, was because of an interview I did with Bob Burke, correct? Yeah, you want me to share the story? Yeah, tell the story. <laughs> so Bill Doerr, who's the, one of the world's best connectors, if you don't know Bill Doerr, check him out. Great guy uh, up here in the Connecticut area. And he said to me, Joe, uh, I know you have a pretty deep reading list, but have you ever read The Go-Giver? And I hadn't read The Go-Giver. He said, I'd suggest the next book you read be The Go-Giver. I said, okay. A guy like Bill tells you to read a book, you, you, you take him up on it. So I had the book sitting in, in, my, in my office and hadn't gotten to it for a, for a week or so. And had a, had a date night with my wife. Kids were kids were away, and the next day we just kind of had the day to ourselves. And I said, you know, this book's been sitting here and just call, really calling me, and, I, and I'd like to pick it up. And I, I committed to Bill that I would read it. And as soon as I finished, I read the book in one sitting, by the way. And it's a, it's a great book to read in one sitting. It had such a profound impact on my life that I just immediately felt led to reach out to Bob Berg and just let him know what it what an influence that this book had on him. And I got a message right back from on Facebook and initially I thought that maybe it was an assistant or somebody handling his messages, but but I soon realized that no, this was actually Bob Berg responding to this message of gratitude that I was sending to to him and I, I was really pouring out my heart to the, uh, the principles I learned in the book and very specific things and he, he was very grateful and, and obviously credited John David Mann as well his co-writer on the book as he always does is very gracious um, and then he said hey I was just on a podcast with this 
wonderful man out of Melbourne, Australia named Laban Ditchburg. I'm going to send you the link. I would love your feedback on the podcast and on his interview. And he said, I had just such a wonderful time with Laban. I think he's an amazing human being. And I, I would just love your feedback as well. So, uh, you know, a man of my word, I said, I'll absolutely check it out. And I'll actually absolutely give you feedback on it. And, you know, what happened next was really why we're, we're sitting here. I reached out to you and I gave, I gave uh, Bob his feedback, but I reached out to you and I said, man, I, I just absolutely love the interview that you just had with Bob. I shared with you the story about how I reached out to Bob after uh, reading The Go-Giver. And you and I had a, a half hour, we, we scheduled a half hour chat. We had a little difficulty getting it. You know, you were in Melbourne. We were plus 14 at the time, uh, hour difference. And what turned into a half hour, scheduled half hour conversation, I think we talked for two and a half to three hours. Am I, am I about right there, Levin? <laughs> I think it was three hours, yeah. And we had one of the one of the most unforgettable conversations that I've had with any professional in, in my lifetime. And uh, for those of you that subscribe to Laban and you know Laban um, and, and you like his work and believe in his work, um, Laban read me the first chapter of Bet on You and told me the story about how Les Brown spoke this book into being. And it just had an immediate impact on me. I could tell Laban was uh, totally set apart from the pack. In this in this journey that he was having, and I, I saw the purity and the authenticity of your message, and really what you were trying to get out to people and, and really help people. And then that rubbed off on me because um, get it, coming from a world of business into this coaching uh, world that I'm in, uh, I saw I saw so much inauthentic inauthenticity out in the world and, and I didn't like it at all. And I, and I said, that's not the coach I would want to be. That's not the strategist I would like to be. That's not how I want to work with people. Um, I had been approached by a lot of coaches that wanted to work with me. And I just didn't like the way that that, that model had been. And I found something totally different when I met Laban. And I, and I found something totally different when I met Bob. It was just service first mentality. It was just this authentic, we're dealing with actual human beings that care and that want to serve and love people. And that's been my experience with you, man. And, and it's just, you rubbed off on me and your, your enthusiasm for serving people and your enthusiasm for helping people has really uh, had a great impact on my life, my friend. So uh, yeah, kudos to you for doing that and, and helping me with that. And uh, the, the rest is history, man. We, we, We've been on this almost two-year journey together, and, and I love it. Well, mate, <laughs> I forgot <laughs> the story. I'm, I'm really glad that you cut me off and, and allowed you to tell that. Uh, mate, I, I really, really graciously um, appreciate that and receive it. And uh, it's funny how you forget, you know, I, I, and, and maybe this is a conversation for another time, but I had a... Um, a divine download just in the last week where I had this idea of writing a book called World's Best Courage Coach. And it, and it wasn't really written by me, but it was written, chapters were written by people that I've met, like in this example, for you to share your experience um, and for me to comment on my experience with that person. I, I wondered, I was still sort of formulating in my brain how that would come across as a book and to make sure it was going to provide um, tremendous value. But hear, hearing this now, I mean, I would hope other than me, it, it provides value because you can, you can inspire, or you would have inspired people to operate from the same place. And I think that's the significance, right? Because it's not all one-sided here. Like you, you have been instrumental in connecting me with some of the most amazing people on planet earth and Jack Canfield, um, is one name that people might have heard of, but introducing me to people like Chris Doris and, and then uh, Vanessa Bro. I, you know, I, I sort of lose track of the spider web of how it's happened. And then, in, and this was in the moment, this was in lockdown in Australia as well. So there was moments of des quiet desperation where you were able to, 
use your coaching genius uh, to help me through very dark times as well. So I'm incredibly grateful for that. And I, and I, w- I want to explore more about the, the, the specific type of coaching that you do as well so people know by the end of this as well. What was it like getting a shout-out from Jack Canfield? <laughs> it, it was amazing. I, I love success principles. I love Jack Canfield. I think that, you know, it's just one of those guys that have uh, taken really – really complex principles and really simplified them and brought them to where, where we can all understand them. We can implement them. So that's the, that's the, that's the beauty of this is implementation. What actions are we taking on all of these books we're reading, all these talks we're listening to, you know, people will listen to this podcast and what we will create today will inspire an action tomorrow. And what are the actions that were inspiring? What are people doing next? And, you know, to have Jack Canfield, uh, the author of Success Principles, Chicken Soup for the Soul, you name it, he's, he's one, of, one of the best sellers of, of our, of our uh, personal development field. Shout, shout out. And I know you shared, you know, our, our brief story with him. I, I just, it was, it was an amazing feeling to, to have a shout out from, from Mr. Canfield. What did he say? What did he say for the folks at home? He, he said, Joe Perone, you are a legend. <laughs> but I received that from Jack. <laughs> He's correct. You don't need Jack Canfield to tell you that, but it helps, you know. <laughs> it helps. I'm curious to I'm curious to know, Joe, have you ever um have you ever had a down day, a flat day, and 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 you've just gone into the archives and just played that recording <laughs> just to pep yourself up? <laughs> yeah, I, I have. I have. <laughs> I think I think we all need that in life, right? We like to be acknowledged by someone who is so uh, positively influential in our life is is I think a catalyst for success. You know, as, no matter what we're trying to achieve in life, we all have days where things don't work out how we'd like them to, and and you know it's all part of the lesson and the growing. And then sometimes you just need to remind, be grateful, and be reminded of of. The, the positive impact that we've had on people's lives. Um, and it's, isn't it funny how quickly we forget the positive impact we have on people's lives, you know? I, you know, I totally agree. And, and that's that's really what, you know, I work with, with clients is, is writing your highlight reel down. You know, writing down those things that people have acknowledged you for and those things that you're really grateful for, those highlight moments of your life because – it's really easy to have a down day. It's really easy to have something go wrong and, and you can really just go back to those old ways of being. But when you can remind yourself, you can have a highlight reel of the wins that you've had, of the people you've been able to serve and the, the lessons that you've been able to learn. Um, Laban, I, I, I can't speak highly enough to, to create your own highlight reel. And as you are becoming your own superhero, as your podcast uh, is, is titled, having a list of those things that make you a superhero are so critical to your success and, and being able to pull yourself out of those down days. Yeah, I'm in, brother. And I, your, your area of expertise these days if someone met you at a cocktail party and they're like oh hey joe nice to meet you what do you do what's your response laban when people walk up to me i love letting people know that i help dads transform their business so that they can live the lives that they truly desire and you know most people say you know well that's that's interesting you know tell tell me more and for me to share that with people and talk about the experience I had as a, a, a you know, my wife was still pregnant with our with our first son, Bruno, and I was a busy business owner. I was I was very successful on paper. You know, if you look at the balance sheet, it looked good. Had a nice house, nice car. Inside, though, Laban, I I was I was a wreck. I had anger issues. I had emotional issues. I had eating issues. I didn't take care of my body. Mind, body, spirit were, were, were an afterthought for me. And it was just about what I can get. 
what I can get, how much I can accumulate. And when I learned that that was not going to work because after all of this stuff I had collected, I still felt like garbage. And I, and I was had an anxiety attacks and panic attacks. I actually collapsed from one of them in the middle of a busy work day in my business where life should have been Joe Perone. You're living the life, man. You, you're, you're having anxiety. You have issues. You have problems. You, you know, you have all this, this stuff going on in your life. Yeah. Yeah. I had that stuff going on in my life because I left the mental part of it unchecked. And it was a, it was about my finish line was about collecting all these things and accumulating all these things. I had a, a design for my life that was based on media, social media, pe- other people that I had thought were mentors of mine. And I didn't design life the way I wanted to live it. I didn't design the, the things that I wanted to do. I was just copy paste off other people lately. And when I tell people that I help dads create the life that they would would dream of, you know, sometimes people roll their eyes about that. You know, that's that's an easy eye roll for someone. But when you think about creating something that you want, not what everybody else has, something unique for yourself, man, it's so powerful. To to decide what kind of dad you want to be, decide what kind of husband you want to be. Decide what kind of business owner you want to do. Just go down the list and select those things. You know, and be, begin to get into the state of that realized identity that you that you want to create, that you are creating by your way of being. Man, it's so powerful. And you, you exemplify exactly what you preach, from what I can tell, at least. I don't live in a cupboard in your home. <laughs> That'd be pretty weird. But uh, from what I can tell, I've seen the shift. I've seen the shift because this has sort of been an ongoing um, progression for you as well. I'm curious to know what's been, how have the the boys benefited first? Ah, Phenomenal question. And and how old old are your two lads? My oldest son, Bruno, is eight years old. He just had a birthday. uh, So... November 18th was his eighth birthday. And Marcello, who's my younger guy, he'll be four on January 2nd. So eight and four. And how have they benefited? Oh, my God. Laban, in this era of time, attention, and focus-starved children, I I realized it more than ever. you know, ADD, eating problems, suicide rates, all these things are at an all-time high if you, if you read the statistics and you read, uh, you know, what's going on in the world. And kids need our attention more than ever. And when I, part of, part of designing the life that I wanted to live and the, the dad that I wanted to be, I wanted to make sure that my kids had my attention they knew that they had dad there to support them and they had room to make mistakes they had room to make to to make their own decisions and i'm realizing that at, at, at a very early age with my children and we don't just stick them in front of a tablet we don't we don't hand them off a, a video game controller or a cell phone and just let them let them go go away you know there there is a challenge to parents be present with your children these are our creation just like you wouldn't start a business or you wouldn't create anything and just just let it just let it go away and let it let it go do its own thing this is work parenting is work this is our obligation. We are responsible for the next generation. And, and people like to complain about, you know, the world that we're leaving for our children. Well, it starts with us. And I took a, a supreme obligation for that. When I, when I decided that I was going to have children, 
And being able to decide what kind of parent I'm going to be will directly impact with the world that we live in. And my children get time with me. Um, I have a business partner. We have, um, other than the work I do with business owners, we have brick and mortar businesses. We have automotive businesses. I have a 50% business partner in, in both of those automotive shops. And we sat down and, and said, what kind of business do we want to run? We want to build something that's going to burn us out, stress us out so that we can go home late at night and, and just wolf down some food and barely get some time with our families and then just, just repeat that until we're 65 years old and you know, kind of, kind of, kind of leave it to the gods to decide what's going to happen with our family or are we going to do the, the deep work? Are we going to do the hard work? Create a business by our design that our families are first. Our families are number one. Because when we get to that last day, we're not going to wish that we worked more. We're not going to wish that we had another comma in the bank account. So when you ask me how my boys have benefited, they have a dad that's present for them. They have a dad that knows that they have, they have their full support, and I've been able to create time freedom uh, for my wife, and she's not a stressed out mom, and we're able to be present parents for our children. And you know, I just, I just lo I love that that's the decision that we created by our choices and by our actions. Well, I was going to ask you about Madalena, uh, your wife, because uh, uh, you know, and I wonder if the kids will ever realise just how lucky they are. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like all the things you're talking about are exactly what I craved as a as a young boy, and I didn't get a lot of it because of the you know parents splitting up. and And I know that's common for at least fifty percent of the audience, um, probably more. You know what I mean? So with Madalena, like, what are some of the significant improvements in your relationship? which was already pretty good from what I could tell anyway. Yeah, you know, and, and I'll, I'll say, you know, we don't have a perfect marriage. We don't have a perfect relationship. Nobody's going to have a perfect relationship or a perfect marriage. That's work, too. That's work, too. And we've been able to have the time and have the space to where our life isn't so bombarded every day. Every week, we make time for each other. We schedule time for each other. And we have arguments. We have disagreements. You know, it's not a curated, you know, it's curated as it looks on, on Facebook and Instagram. But that's okay, and it's, it's perfect for us. And we work through our challenges, and we face the challenges head on. And we tell each other the truth. And we're honest with each other. And sometimes the honesty... Is not, you know, is not what we want to hear. And we're, we're able to, to be honest with each other and have time to do it so the kids aren't around. You know, a lot of people think that, you know, we could have a fight in front of the kids and the kids, ah, the kids won't even, won't even remember. These kids remember everything. And one of my mentors, one of the, one of the greatest pieces of advice he ever gave me uh, guy has been uh, married to his wife for you know, 30 plus years, beautiful children. He said, your kids will always remember how they saw you treat their mother. Mm -hmm. And that's their greatest example of love that they'll see. And I, and I took that so seriously. Well, let's talk about some practical stuff, right? Because people, you know, let's say a husband is, is listening or watching this the relationship has become sexless, right? Very common in the current world. Would you say, you don't have to answer this, would you say your romantic connection with, with your wife has improved since you've got the stuff in check? Our, our relationship has improved since we got this in check. We understand each other more. We understand what, what the other one is going through and because we've been able to take time and be patient and not just have demands all the time too often in relationships it's, it's all about what can i get 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 business romantic personal friendships it's about what can i get what can i get what can i get 
And part of, you know, th this ties back into the go-giver, you know, the go-giver uh, of what can I give? What can I give to this relationship? What can I bring to this relationship that it didn't have yesterday? What can I keep bringing back that, you know what, despite, you know, it's like, you, you know, you're a, you're a fitness guy. You know, just because you lift weights one day is not going to make you strong. It's going back every day and, and every day with a commitment and a focus. So to, to, the, to the people that are listening out there that are in a relationship, and it might, might not be the exact relationship that you want right now, have a conversation. Talk. Learn. Give that listening ear. You know, don't be ready to just assume what you know to be true. Be ready to listen and actively listen, not with a response, just so you can understand your partner a little bit more. And this is, you know, I'm, I, guys, I'm preaching to myself just as much as we're, we're, we're sharing this, this on this podcast. That's something I got to remind myself of every day. You know, but to the, to the degree that I remind myself of that every day, actually do it, take action on it. Listen, understand, see what value I can bring to the table and give. That's been the success of our relationship. Yeah, it's and it's so great to witness, John, uh, having a conversation with Anna, my wife. Yesterday we were at the beach, live here in Mexico, and you go to the beach a lot when you live next to it, right? <laughs> and she said, do you know, Laban, you know, one of the things I love about you, and I said, what's that, darling? She said, you always answer the phone when I ring and and I thought about that for a second I was like like I, I don't always answer the phone because I you know I have my life and I might be in a meeting and or at the gym or somewhere where I'm not ruled by my phone ringing you know what I mean but but any opportunity I get to see that she's messaged me or called I make it a priority to, to acknowledge that and get back to her and, and I said to her, darling, do you know one of the things that I love about you? She said, what's that? I said, it's the same thing. And it's just, for me, it's a pretty effortless thing. It's not like I'm going out of my way to do it. But her knowing that she can depend or be, I can be reliable in that, in that moment is something that I really take a lot of pride in. And I know that the, the outcome with Anna is tremendous because I experience it as well. I mean, that's just one little practical thing that, that people can use. Um, figure out, figure out what, what's in alignment. But that, that is something that, you know, if I don't hear back from her, then I can, is everything okay kind of thing. You know, it's like, like this built-in warning s signal. And, um, yeah, I don't know, it just sort of came to me as you were sharing that. So I can, I can really identify with that. It's great. Yeah, I love that tip because, you know, it's, it's part of the understanding. You both understand that, that you value that. You value that connection. You value, the, you know, caring when the other person is calling, taking that, taking that they feel prioritized in your life. And when you say, oh, you're my, you're my priority and I care about you and I love you, well, if you didn't pick up the phone, you know, that would really be a, a value uh, misaligned, you know. So, yeah, kudos to you, brother. Yeah, thanks, bro. What else is on your mind, Joe? You know, I, I, I love this, um, this season that we're in right now. It's a season of giving. We're in the, we're in the Christmas season. And what, what I'm, I'm talking about lately is that the kids want our presence much more than our presence. And, you know, it's just been something that I've, it's been on my heart lately to share and it's, it's a play on words, but it really isn't a play on words. It's a, this is reality. And if you ask your children, what do you value more? A, a, a big Christmas tree full of presents, or would you rather have dad and mom home a little bit more? The kids just want you to be around. The kids just want to spend time with you. They think they're the coolest people ever, and they, they just want your time. And that's one of the greatest gifts that you can give them this season. And I know you still spoil the shit out of those <laughs> two boys as well. <laughs> you know, we spoil them, and I won't even use that word because I'm careful about the words that I use, is we, we like them to have experiences. 
Who reward knows? is reward a better word for it? Um, yeah, but the, our love is unconditional. There, the, there's, I, I told Bruno the other day. I said, "There's nothing you could do to get my love. You already have it. Nothing's gonna take it away, and you don't have to do anything to get it." So, you know, um, there's there's icings on the cake. You know, we we, um, we how did he that. how did he respond? By the way, when you said that, he he roll he rolls his eyes and smiles. <laughs> <laughs> He rolls his eyes and smiles, but I, I but I want to teach him that lesson. Um, too too often I see uh, the trade off. People try to make the trade off, and then they spend their lives trying to make the trade off of love and the things, and it, it's always a trade. I'll give you this if you give me this. And you know what? We we met you and Anna uh, for dinner out in Scottsdale, and Arizona was a, was a nice was a nice trip. And Bruno still talks about going out to dinner with. And really it's so great uh you know bruno values relationships he values people he, he is very intrigued by people and um seeing seeing new people hearing your voice you know he he loves your australian accent and, and it's something that i have lo- grown to love about him that he's seeing the world in a whole new whole new lens uh, in a much different lens than I saw the world, and the the ability to give him experiences that he'll never forget means so much more to me than giving him a toy that's going to be you know donated in a year or you know broken or not played with. And you know we, we, we do love toys. I mean, I was playing Legos with my my three year old this morning uh, before this call, but. I'd rather have them have the experiences because they're going to last forever. Yeah, it's. I've got four nieces and nephews from my on my brother, his four kids, and I think nine nine till about eighteen months old are they are, they are now. And I made a point of never that, and they were interstate. So, and I was visiting four times a year for a long time, and I made a point of never bringing gifts with me. Because when I was growing up, I had cousins that would come and visit, or my grandfather, who would just bring like a 10-pound bag of sweets, <laughs> right? And I always associated, I'd be like, hey, granddad, give me the sweets, and then like get the sweets and then disappear off, right? So I, I didn't, I never really, appre- all I can remember him for is the sweets. I don't remember any significant, you know, emotional connection or whatever, like he was trying to fill a void and you know he did the best he could with the tools he had available but I want to make sure that when I arrive they don't associate my arrival with this um like a, an incentive right and while, while I'm there there's plenty of things that I do you know where they get they get stuff um but it is experiences right I think that language is really significant it is experiences uh so you got me you got the juices flowing there Joe I appreciate that yeah, can I can I share with you all the philosophy behind that too, and kind of how it goes back to yeah, go for it. Cre- creating freedom in your business and creating freedom in your life when you when you subscribe to that philosophy. Can I can I share that? Yeah, please. You know, so right now we're we're at a time where it, you know credit card debt is at an all time high, consumer debt is at an all time high, and. It, it, we're trying to spend our way out, spend our way into happiness, spend our way into, uh, you know, the time that we're lacking with our, our families and people, you know, they'd rather spend the money than spend the time. It's a lot easier. It's a lot, it's a lot safer to, to spend the spend the money than spend the time. You know, when we spend the time, you really have to use those tools, those listening ears. You have to use that understanding. It's it's a little. You know, if you haven't done it, it, it could be a little bit, uh, you know, uncomfortable at first. You know, when you're, when you're stepping into that, that role of, of, you know, listening and, and being a little bit uncomfortable and spending the time and there might be some situations that you really have to focus on. So some people just choose to spend the money. You know, it's like eating junk food. You know, you can, you know, you can sit down and cook that meal and spend the time and, and create that create that meal or you can just go just grab something in a bag or a box and, and eat. it's a lot easier you know in the long run it's terrible just like like that philosophy 
Spend the money. Spend your way out of it. Let's just go into debt. You know, and what I found was I, my, my family doesn't need that much stuff. We don't need a lot to make us happy. If our state of being is happy, you know, I had a client recently. He says, you know, I just, no matter what I do, I can't be, I, I can't be happy. And I said, okay, well, tell me what you're grateful for. So I kind of took him a minute and, you know, started started priming the pump and he was telling me all these things he was he was grateful for. And I said, you know, in, in all the, those things that you told me that you were grateful for, all that stuff's free. Being grateful for your family, being grateful for your friends, being grateful for your, your line of work, being grateful for your, the roof over your head. Like, people scoff at that later. But what are the statistics for the people that don't have that stuff? Talk about that stuff that people don't have. Stuff the money can't buy. The MasterCard priceless stuff. And as he as he started going through all these things he was grateful for, I just saw I just saw an energy shift in him. And he realized that all this other things, the things he was chasing, spending money on him, and working to create an income so that he could spend money and let me create more of an income so I could spend more money. Kind of glazing over the top and never going deeper and never going into gratitude and never going into really, you know. When you wake up in the morning, you think about it like, who turned the lights on? <laughs> who kick started my heart this morning? Who got my lungs going? I didn't create these lungs. I didn't create this heart. I got blood flowing through my veins. Like, I hit the lottery. I hit the jackpot. You know, when more people decide that this is a this is a once in a lifetime experience. Life is a life once in a lifetime experience. This isn't a dress rehearsal. As Uncle Tom Perone, give him a little shout out, Uncle Tom Perone. Shout out to you, Tom Perone. <laughs> you know, he says life isn't a dress rehearsal. It's a, life is a once in a lifetime experience. We get we we have the opportunity and the blessing to have. And if we can't start there, we've already lost the game. Amen, brother. Amen. Joe, how do people get a hold of you? Laban, it's very simple. Uh, you see JoePerone.biz at the bottom of your screen there. Would, for the for the for the audience that are listening on the podcast audio only, it's Joe Perone, J O E P E R R O N E dot biz, and I would love to connect with you there. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. Look me up on LinkedIn or Facebook. I'm always posting something that's you know I, I believe is valuable for that day, and I would just love to connect with people on those channels. Joe Perone dot biz. Joe, do you have any concluding thoughts for our amazing audience today? You know, your podcast is titled Become Your Own Superhero, and everybody has the seeds of, of superhero in them, and I would just encourage you to listen, listen to guys like Laban Ditchburn. You know, the, the people that he subscribes to, come check me out at joeperone.biz. You know, this isn't self-serving. This is to help other people. This is, we, you and I, Laban, we found um, the, the life that we want to live, and we found happiness, and we found freedom in the life that we want to live. And we, you know, it wasn't easy for either one of us. And, and we had there was there's a there's a there's a road that we have to that we have to go on every single day. And I believe that you and I are are in service to people. We, we truly want to help people, and and. Become your own superhero for me has just been something that I, I see you do, and I'm, I'm saying, you know, this is this is something that, that is really helping people, and I and I and I love uh, doing that as well. So, you know, thankful for you, my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Perrine. Thank you, brother.